All right, welcome back guys. In this video, we're just gonna be drawing a Gantt chart from a table of dependencies. If you stick around until the end of the video, I will also link another video where I solve the, the network diagram and critical path for this exact same project. But for now, we're working on the Gantt chart and we've been given the table of dependencies. So in the table of dependencies, we have the activities, uh, each of the activities, predecessor relationships, and the duration of each individual activity. What we're not given is the overall project duration and the time or day that each of these activities start and finish on, um, which is both of those will be able to determine from the Gantt chart. So if you're doing it by hand, using graph paper is a pretty good idea, or at least setting up a coordinate axis that has um, the days going across the bottom and the activities on the left side, preferably in the same order that you've been given in the table of dependencies. If you need to change the order around later for some reason, that's fine, you can do that. But to get started here, activity A has no predecessor, so this is going to start at the very beginning of our project and it has a duration of two days. So we're just going to come to our Gantt chart here and we're gonna start activity A at zero and we're going to come across two days. Then activity B depends on activity A, so it can't start until activity A has finished and it's three days long. So we come to the Gantt chart, we find where activity A finishes and that's going to be where activity B starts and it is three days, so we'll come across three days. The same is going to be for activity C. It can't finish until A is done. So again, we find where A finishes, which is at the end of the second day. And then activity C is going to pick up at that same point, which is also the beginning of the third day. And this one is just one day long. Next, we're going to move on to activity D. Well, activity D can't start until activity B is finished and it's two days long. So we find where activity B finishes and we come down to activity D. So that's where we're going to start. And this is two days. So we'll come over one, two. Then activity E, it also can't start until activity B is finished. And this one is four days long. So again, we find where activity B finishes. We drop down to E and we're going to put this one on for four days. So one, two, three, four. Okay, now taking a look at activity F here, it can't start until B and C are both finished and it's one day long. So we find out where B finishes. It's going to finish here at the end of the fifth day. And it also depends on activity C. Activity C finishes here at the end of the third day. Activity F can't start until both of them are complete. So it has to start after this point. And it is just one day long. So we can draw this on as one day. When we move on to activity G, it also depends on activity D and E, and it's three days long. So we're going to find out where activity D finishes. It's going to be here at the end of the seventh day. And activity E finishes here at the end of the ninth day. So we can't start until both of those are complete. So we have to start here after the end of the ninth day, which is also technically the beginning of the 10th day. And uh, it is three days long. So we're gonna draw it like this, one, two, three. All right, moving on to activity H. H depends on E and F and it's five days long. So we're gonna to have to find out where E and F finish. So E finishes here at the end of the ninth day and F finishes here at the end of the sixth day. We can't start H until both of those are complete and it's five days long. So we're going to start here and go across five days. And the last activity I, it just has to start after F finishes. So F finishes here at the end of the sixth day. That's where we're gonna pick up. It's the beginning of the seventh day and we're gonna come across three days, one, two, three, just like that. So now when we look at our Gantt chart, we can see here clearly that the project is expected to be 14 days long. And we can also see where each activity starts and stops. So as we move from the left to the right, we have a pretty good indication of when activities are starting and finishing as we flow through the project. If you've been asked to put the, the final project at the very bottom, then for example, you might have to take this activity I and move it up above maybe these two. I put it above G and H and drop G and H down. That depends on uh, your preferences or what you've been asked to do. The only reason it's down here is because that's just the order it was given to us in the table of dependencies. So hopefully that helps. If you're interested in seeing this exact same project in the form of its network diagram and solving for the critical path, then that video is up on the screen. So do check that one out as well. And thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you there.